All right, guys, this is where I'm looking to short Rivian. This is actually the set of circumstances that I personally think set up better for a short trade on the company, and here's why. Now, massive disclaimer first, this is not investment advice. This is just simply what I see or what I personally approach approach the way I approach shorting a company, especially after a massive IPO. Remember how Rivian is up there and kind of in my follow-ups, I said, I'm not going to short it yet, but it will be a short candidate very, very soon, I think. Well, year end, they come out with this, that they're going to delay max pack deliveries to 2023. Well, they've been pushing back dates the whole time. I get it's rough. I'm not trying to say that Rivian totally sucks as a company. But the fact that the IPO was so overhyped and so valuable is what sets this up for a perfect situation of shorting it over the next little bit. So let's read on about this. Scaringe, the CEO, notes max battery variants account for approximately 20% of the 71,000 R1Ts. So that's about 14,200 vehicles. Rivian is allowing people to change their orders if they want to get the R1T earlier. It also promised to share more information on delivery timings in early 2022. Okay, so let's talk about early 2022. Okay, we have a messed up supply chain. You get the chip shortages and stuff that affects this, as well as the fact that their production is super low. They're supposed to be breaking ground for a factory next year in Georgia. But again, what happens if that gets delayed? Chances are it will somehow. Then on top of that, notice that they're, you know, talking, hey, early 2022. This will probably translate to like May 2022. And I don't imagine that they have all of that many updates or amazing news coming. So for me personally, this is that perfect kind of post IPO short candidate. So here's the hourly chart for Rivian. And you notice it got up to this high of 179.47. It has trailed back and then it was kind of like range bound in between like 100 and 130, really more like 125, 100, 125. So looking at this, it's already dropped another range, got as low as 90. Now the ceiling is, is kind of this recent high of about 108. When I look at this and I factor in, you know, kind of what I think their time frame is actually going to be. I don't like to sell my options the last month, and I also don't like to hold them for too long. So there's a couple of options that personally I would be looking at, and that is the 4th of February 2022 options. Really, any of them, and I can add some strikes so you can see kind of within the chain. I wouldn't get too far out of the money. I'm not saying this is going to tank to like $80. But I just don't think that there's going to be a lot of catalysts that can bail it out. So for those, I'd be looking at these 101, 102s probably. As far as further out, that's where I might look into something like the 90 puts. The reason for that, again, is what happens if we have some economic issues? What happens with pre-orders for them? You know, if they start losing a ton of these 71,000 pre-orders, which can very likely happen. As a matter of fact, I know two people personally who have canceled. So that's a small sample size of 71,000, but they're kind of fed up with the fact that they know it's going to end up being a lot longer. Now, once again, I want to make clear that this is an investment advice. This is just simply my thought process. I'm, I'm giving you an idea of how I look at this chain of events. And I dealt with enough IPOs over the last while that I feel relatively confident. I still practice reasonable risk management, don't go huge for my portfolio, nothing like that. But I do understand a lot of ways that the market will hype things up, bring them on the market, and then they start to collapse back down to reality. Well, on top of that, I also don't think that the stock market is exactly healthy right now. As much as it's breaking to new highs all the time, I think this is more of a blow off top scenario than an actual, you know, strong bull rally that's going to continue for the next decade kind of situation. But I can be totally wrong. And again, I don't think Rivian's a bad company. I don't think their products are terrible necessarily from what I've read. It's just more of this idea that they're trying to catch someone like Tesla. And even though they have Amazon's backing, they can still mess this up. 
Another thing that helps bring some confidence is how much other companies have kind of played into this. If you remember, I've, I've talked in the past about Peloton was one I shorted. Zillow was another one I shorted. You look at like Best Buy and Target around their earnings. You know, there's some of these things where the volatility in the market's getting bigger. And I think like, you know, something like Best Buy and Target, those are great companies. I have nothing against those companies. I actually think they're some of the top type companies. But when the market's kind of rough on some of those, even if they're in a different sector, what I'm saying is something that's overhyped and overvalued as Rivian, you know, it's the same idea that happens with Snapchat. You know, if there's enough news, if there's enough negativity around it, it's like, yeah, the market cap makes no sense. You know, 200 times sales or whatever. Rivian doesn't even have any, like they're not really manufacturing anything yet. So it's just one of those things where I'm saying, take it with a grain of salt. But on the last couple of calls I've made, I'm relatively confident that, you know, Rivian's probably not that got got that much in terms of catalysts right now. And so I'm kind of interested to see, but what's your take? Am I missing the boat on this? Is there some reason that Rivian belongs at 150 and will be there within the next couple of months? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you again real soon. Bye.